Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac. Jim Rapp is a naturalist who, among other things, organizes the annual award-winning Delmarva Birding Weekend and serves as director of the Hazel Outdoor Discovery Center in Eden, Maryland. Each week, he'll help us get connected to all the natural wonders that can be experienced here. This time, he'll tell us about exploring one of Delmarva's quintessential waterways. One of the best early spring outdoor outings on Delmarva is paddling a kayak or canoe on Nassauango Creek near Snow Hill, Maryland. There's something very special about gliding along dark water under your own steam on a cool, crisp morning as the heat from the sun begins to warm you and every other living thing in the bald cypress forest. A tributary of the magnificent Pocomoke River, the Nassauango is perfect for all ages and skill levels. The creek's gentle waters provide a natural path for paddlers who aren't skilled with a compass or GPS. Honestly, there's no way to get lost back here, but you'll feel as if you've trekked through a wilderness waterway after paddling just two hours on the Nassauango. You don't have to own a boat for this Delmarva experience. The Pocomoke River Canoe Company in Snow Hill has you covered. You can't miss it. The barn red building is a Snow Hill icon and sits right on the bridge crossing the river along Route 12. Built around 1924 near the railroad that served the town during its former industrial era, the building once served as a warehouse for the Cordry Company. The shop will arrange everything you need for a safe trip. Most importantly, they'll deliver you to the launch site at Red House Road and pick you up when you're done. It will enrich your experience to know that you'll be paddling through what was once Maryland's largest Native American settlement in the late 1600s. The canoe company crew is very helpful, and they will provide a quick paddling lesson for those who need it. They will also help you slip your boat into the dark water from the launch installed by the Nature Conservancy. We are so fortunate to have this community conservation organization working on Delmarva. Some of our most pristine protected lands are managed by the Conservancy, including the 9,953 acres that make up the Nassauango Creek Preserve. The champions for the preserve were Ilya and Nassauango Joe Fair. In the 1980s, they prevented the damming of the Nassauango and convinced the Nature Conservancy to preserve the swamp and upland forest that drains into it. Whenever I paddle here, I think about Ilya and Nassauango Joe and what their work years ago provides for us today. You're listening to the Delmarva Almanac with Jim Rapp, who's talking about spring paddling on the Lower Eastern Shore. Look down as your paddle gently carves the dark water. The Nassauango was the color of tea that has steeped a bit too long. The color is caused by the tannic acid that seeps into the water from the decaying leaves of cypress trees and other plants that line the bank. Some visitors think the creek is dirty due to the dark appearance, but their water quality here is actually quite good. One possible benefit of the tannin-rich water is that it is not favored by mosquitoes you'll be pleasantly surprised by the lack of pesky bugs. The Nassauango is dominated by bald cypress. These majestic trees form the northernmost stand of these southern swamp ecosystems. While paddling the upper Nassauango near the launch site, look to the creek bank for the knobby knees of the bald cypress. The most likely purpose of these elfin structures is to support the tree in the saturated mud of the swamp. Bald cypress also feature wide, buttressing trunks that make them look like trees from a tropical rainforest. Although grouped with evergreen cone-bearing trees, bald cypress trees are deciduous and shed their needle-like leaves in the fall. They get the name bald because of their appearance after they lose their leaves. The giant cypress seem to be the preferred host for resurrection fern, which looks like greenish-brown shag carpet growing on the tree's thick horizontal branches. This amazing fern can lose up to 97% of its water content during an extreme dry spell. During this time, it shrivels into a brown clump. When it rains again, the resurrection fern will come back to life and look green and healthy. The swamp provides perfect habitat for a wide variety of animals. During the early spring, before the trees have leafed out, you'll notice large piles of sticks near the water's edge. These carefully crafted structures are beaver lodges. If you paddle too close when there are young in the lodge, a protective parent will swim towards your boat and slap the water with a loud whack of its flat tail. This is a warning to move along. River otters also love the cypress swamp. Look for a fast-moving line of bubbles breaking the water's surface in front of your boat. If you're patient and quiet, 
you may be rewarded with a glimpse of a playful otter coming up for air. While not everyone will see a beaver or an otter, you will see and hear the birds. The Pocomoke Nassawango region has been declared an important bird area by the Audubon Society of Maryland, D.C. for providing habitat critical to sustaining native bird populations. Of the 24 forest interior dwelling birds known to nest on Delmarva, 21 breed regularly in the Pocomoke Nassawango area. During a slow, meandering paddle in the spring, you are likely to be rewarded with multiple sightings of the magnificent prothonotary warbler. The males are bright gold with greenish-gray wings and can be found singing loudly from cypress knees and low-lying branches along the Nassawango. Other birds you might encounter include wood ducks, blue-gray net catchers, and pileated woodpeckers. Partially submerged logs along the route provide basking platforms for painted and red-belly turtles and northern water snakes, depending on your pace, and I recommend a slow, meandering drift so you don't miss out on the natural sights and sounds. You'll see the Nassawango Bridge after about 90 minutes of paddling. Ancient trees, dark water, singing warblers, and basking turtles. Although not a true wilderness adventure by definition, it sure feels as if you've traveled, on your own power, to a distant wild place and all just 10 minutes from historic Snow Hill. If you love nature, coming up the last weekend of this month are three terrific events. The Delmarva Birding Weekend, the Ward Foundation Wildfowl Carving Championship, and the Milford Bug and Bud Festival. For details about these and other outdoor events, and to see a slideshow that will help you identify the birds mentioned in this story, be sure and visit delmarvaalmanac.com slash nature. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio, and underwriters, eatdrinkbyart.com, for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This show has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune.